Hello viewers, welcome to the program in the next level. In the next level is the program that showcase and chronicle and highlights the activities weekly in the presidential villa. My name is Hassan Umar Farooq. I am the presenter of the program. In today's edition of the program, we'll bring you the agreement signed between the Para government of Nigeria and Siemens a Telecommunication and Electricity Company, a German company that was in State House Abuja for an agreement of electricity development that will bring about 11,000 megawatts to Nigeria by the year 2023. Also in the program, you heard about the policy retreat hosted by President Muhammadu Buhari in the presidential villa. This and many more will be in the program. In today's edition of program, we start with Monday, where President Muhammadu Buhari supervised a signing of agreement between the federal government of Nigeria, represented by Bureau for Public Enterprises, I mean the Director General, who represented Nigeria, and also Siemens, a German company, about electricity roadmap in Nigeria. This agreement will produce 11,000 megawatts by the year 2023. This report. The Director General of Public Enterprises, Alex Oko, signed on behalf of the federal government, while the Chief Executive Officer of Siemens, Joe Keisha, signed on behalf of his company. The deal is the product of a meeting between President Muhammadu Buhari and German Chancellor Angela Merkel last year. In his remark after the signing ceremony, President Muhammad Buhari said the agreement will help to fix the power sector in Nigeria, thus enhancing economic development. And in Nigeria, whilst we are blessed to have significant natural gas, hydro and solar resources for power generation, we are still on the journey to achieving reliable, affordable and quality electricity supply necessary for economic growth industrialization and poverty alleviation. President Muhammad Buhari said previous administrations have made futile attempts in the past to fix the problem, but the opportunity from German through Siemens is a good one that can provide the needed solution. Now we have an excellent opportunity to address this challenge. This government's priority will stabilize the power generation and gas supply sector through the payment assurance facility, which led to a peak power supply of 5,222 megawatts. Earlier in his remark, the CEO of Siemens, Joe Keisha, said the partnership will enable the country to enhance its power delivery capacity significantly. It will enable the establishment of small and medium sized businesses, and it will enhance. Nigeria's industrialization and stability as one of the leading nations of the African continent. Joe added that the power target will lead the country to the next industrial pace. Also speaking to the State House journalists after the event, the Director General of Bureau of Public Enterprises, Alex Oko, described the company as a credible partner. The BPE both said the partnership will help address power challenges facing Nigeria. The partnership on the roadmap for power generation will aid the activities of Transmission Company of Nigeria, TCN, and 11 discos within the country, including software maintenance and support for four years, with a scarce with a source claiming that the project can be compared to that of Egypt mega projects. From State House, Abuja. And after the event, we were able to interview some of the participants and also the dignitaries that attended the signing of the agreement. And this is what we discuss with them. We are very delighted um, as the Bureau of Public Enterprises uh, at this opportunity to collaborate uh, on a G2G basis uh, with Siemens uh, Group and essentially to improve the, uh, the situation of power supply uh, in Nigeria. Uh, for us, we couldn't have asked for a more credible partner you know, uh, in this journey and we're quite happy to be working with uh, Siemens on this project from the government of Nigeria and all our private sector partners to design and participate in, electrification in the Nigeria 
electrification roadmap. On that roadmap, we will uh, enable the country and its uh, companies to increase the delivery capacity of power uh, in the first phase to 7,000 megawatt, in the second phase up to 11,000, and in the third phase to 25,000 megawatt. That will significantly enhance the nation's and the country's power supply. It will also enhance the country to get started to the next industrial phase so that we believe we can actually very much benefit together the government, the people of Nigeria and of course even as a company. I was very honored today that we were able to sign this roadmap in the presence of the President and our partners and I will personally make sure that this is going to be the big success of Nigeria, Siemens, together with all our partners here in the country. On Wednesday last week, President Muhammadu Buhari sworn in Justice Mohammed Tonko at the 18th Chief Justice of Nigeria after the confirmation by the Senate on July 17. And here's the report. President Muhammadu Buhari entered the council chambers at exactly 10.30 a.m. in the morning. And that kick-starts the swearing ceremony. After reading the citation of Justice Tanko Mohammed, then he was admitted the oath of office. As I will preserve the facts and the laws of the Muhammad, who hails from Dogua Gyat, a local government of Bochi State, was born on December 31st, 1953. He obtained his primary education at Gyat, a primary school from 1961 to 1968, and then proceeded to government secondary school Azari from 1969 to 1973. He attended Abdullahi Bahar University, Kano, for his IJMB in 1975, and later went ahead to study law at Ahmadu Bello University, Zaria, from 1976 to 1980. He attended Nigeria Law School from 1980 to 1981. Justice Muhammad was elevated to the position of Justice of Court of Appeal from 1993 to 2006. He became Justice of the Supreme Court of Nigeria in their 2006 and was sworn in at January 8, 2007, until his appointment as the acting CGN by the President on 25th January, after suspension of former CGN World Justice Walter Onogen. Today's swearing of Justice Tanko followed the voluntary retirement of Enogen and subsequent confirmation by the Senate on July 17th. And after the swearing ceremony, this is what Justice Tanko Mohammed told State House correspondent. We are supporting the government and fighting the correction because we interpret the law and we come with better interpretations even. If there is any case which is pending, and I tell you that we have been speeding up any case that has to do with the allegation of corruption. We speed it up so that if somebody requests to go to jail, he'll go to jail. And that, that, that's the end of it. Bochi State Governor Senator Abdul Qadir Bala Mohammed is one of the dignitaries that witnessed the swearing in ceremony. He also expressed his happiness that President Muhammad Uvari have confidence in Bochi State Intigen to serve one of them as Chief Justice of Nigeria. But this uh, very auspicious appointment to our brother, our elder brother, who has distinguished himself as a jurist, somebody of very high integrity. The whole state where I represent is excited by his appointment and indeed the country because he is going to bring pedigree, professionalism and excellence to the judiciary. The swearing ceremony was witnessed by Vice President Professor Emil Sibajo, Deputy Senate President Ove Omo Agege, and the Speaker House of Representatives, Mr. Femi Baja Miamila, among others. From the State House, Abuja. And after the event, we were able to interview some of the dignitaries that graced the occasion. One of them is the Governor of Bochi State, Senator Bala Mohammed, and also the new CGN Justice Mohammed Tonko. And this is what they tell us. And exhilarated by this uh, very auspicious appointment to our brother, our elder brother, who has distinguished himself as a jurist, somebody of very high integrity. 
the whole state where I represent is excited by his appointment and indeed the country because he is going to bring pedigree, professionalism and excellence to the judiciary. You know, uh, civil service, that is what we call career progression. People are graduating from the lower cadre to the higher cadre by virtue of their uh, career in the service and they just happen to be at the neck of time uh, crystallizing on the top and of course we hope they are going to mentor us so that we will be able to have understudy that will come out to us but certainly it is not something that uh, uh, is different but it's uh, a normal career progression. Nigerian judiciary I'm sure is one of the best in Africa. Now if you take a look at our judicial offices, all of us are fully trained and all of us are almost at intervals going on courses so that we remind ourselves of the ethics that is binding on us. Therefore, we pray that with the cooperation of the citizens of this country, Nigerian judiciary will be a very big judiciary and we hope it will be successful during our tenure. But um, you see, many people don't know what is really happening. Anytime you allow in between, the go between, now there are people who are posing themselves as the go between, that is between a judge and perhaps somebody who is standing trial. Don't ever believe in that kind of thing. Accept what is told to you in the court. Don't believe in any subterranean way, because this is the issue. Wait, let them tell you in the court that this is the position of the law. This is what is happening. Some people are going, uh, asking for money here and there. I am sure any judge or any justice who is in his real sense can never ask somebody to go and collect money for him, because he knows that he is being paid by government for what he does. Anybody who is not satisfied with the job and he wants money, judiciary or the judicial line is not a line for money making. It's a line whereby you make a lot of uh, 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 nay. We are supporting the government and fighting the correction because we interpret the law and we come with better interpretations even. If there is any case which is pending, and I tell you that we have been speeding up any case that has to do with the allegation of corruption. We speed it up so that if somebody requests to go to jail, he'll go to jail. And that, that, that's the end of it. And uh, we will see that all this transcends down to the lower app of the judiciary. So that even the area courts, the magistrate courts, will see what we do and uh, they will be bound by what we do. And uh, I'm telling you that uh, the judiciary under my watch, inshallah al Karim, will be better. And uh, the issues of uh, all this kind of corruption, I will ask you people and any other person who knows about it, please let him write to me or let him have contact with me and tell me but remember the thing that is difficult is once we ask you to substantiate you will be able to substantiate don't just make a hollow allegation that we have had we have done this. be sure that you are quite in possession of your facts and you'll be able to establish when we ask you to establish your allegation. On the same Wednesday, President Muhammadu Buhari declared open a policy retreat that will guide this government in the next four years, the way, the policies, and the way to govern the country. And here is a report about that. President Muhammadu Buhari, in his opening address, tasked participants to come up with a policy recommendation that will help his administration deliver on the campaign promises he made during the electioneering campaigns advise the government over the next four years to deliver on our promises in a manner that reflects true changes to the livelihood of our people. 
The president urged the participants who comprise of top government officials and state governors to come up with a key policy proposal that would help government accelerate growth and economic development across the country. Discuss and force for federal government's approval key strategies and high impact initiatives to stimulate economic growth and development. The president reminded the participants that the outcome of the deliberation will only be an adversary. Also speaking, the national chairman of all progressive congress, Adam Soshumoli, advised the private and state government to not to use the pension come in the custody of National Pension Commission, PENCOM, as a budget deficit and infrastructure development. Oshimoli lamented that poverty has continued to ravage Nigerians despite efforts by the current administration to address the scourge. This president, if he has opposition, is among the rich. If he has supporters, is among the poor. The poor people's money must be used to address the critical identifiable challenges of the poor. May God drive our thoughts, our processes, and reject everything such that at the end of the day, those people will say yes, say Baba. Those attending the retreat include Vice President Yemi Osibajo, Secretary of the Government of Federation, Boss Mustafa, Business Mongols Ali Kotangoti, Jim Ovia, and Prime Minister of Ethiopia, Helen Mariam Desalagen. The state governors include Kebi, Plateau, Kano, Kaduna, Kogi, Imo, Bauchi, Edo, Borno, Ekiti, and Lagos states. From State House, Abuja. On the second day of the retreat, that's Thursday evening, President Muhammadu Bahari delivered a speech during the closing ceremony of the two-day retreat that took place in the council chambers of the presidential villa. And here is the speech. I will start by thanking you all for making the time to be here with us over the first two days to discuss how we can all come together to build a better Nigeria. From the presentations, discussions, and exchanges, I could clearly see the patriotism and commitment you all have for this country. This gives me hope that you will surely live a better Nigeria for future generations to come. <clears throat> During these two days, several case studies were presented on how different countries successfully address various issues confronting them. I listened carefully and attentively throughout all the presentations and the subsequent exchanges in the question and answer sessions. What was very obvious is that the journey for each country was different. A good example is on the infrastructure development. The first adopted by Ethiopia is from my understanding the complete opposite of Brazil. This is also the same when it comes to agriculture, where Brazil adopted large-scale mechanized agriculture, while Ethiopia took the out grower and contract farming models. The same can be said when you compare the oil and gas policies of Saudi Arabia, Russia, and the United States, as shown in one of the presentations. Like my brother, the former minister, prime minister of Ethiopia mentioned, the only right answer is the one that is tailored to your specific needs. This means, as we benchmark Nigeria against other countries, we must not lose sight of the laws, regulations, geography, culture, history, and many other factors that make us Nigerians. Some of you may remember, you may remember me saying some years back that what we need are made in Nigeria solutions for our uniquely Nigerian problems. 
For example, in agriculture, we partnered with the Kingdom of Morocco to revive dozens of abundant fertilizer blending plants across the country. We introduced the Anchor Borrowers Program that provided cheap credit to small-scale farmers to buy the right inputs that will lead to enhanced yields. We developed the Food Security Program that provided capital to large-scale food processors to enable them to offtake the grains produced by these farmers. And finally, we introduced policies that restrict imports to support the consumption of locally produced food items. Through these interventions, through these interventions, we are able to systematically address some of the value chain issues confronting agriculture. This led to significant job creation in the rural economy and savings in our foreign reserves. They also led to a lowering of food prices. On infrastructure, through the Presidential Infrastructure Development Fund, we are investing in strategic projects across the country, such as the Second Niger Bridge, Lagos Ibadan Expressway, and the Abuja Kaduna Kano Highway. As you can see, in agriculture, government was just an enabler. We linked the farmers to input suppliers and off takers while providing extension services. In infrastructure development, we decided to build the roads ourselves for now. As a nation, the limited experience we have on road concessions have not been very positive. But that said, we will continue to explore. As we come to the end of this presidential policy dialogue session, the key proposals made by the experts are for the federal government to consider the following strategic initiatives over the next four years. A, stimulate significant investments in the industrialization of agriculture. B, develop policies that will facilitate sector participation in infrastructure projects. C, introduce policies and regulatory changes that will unlock growth potentials in the petroleum sector, both upstream and downstream. D, aggressively improve the ease of doing business by reducing bureaucracy and improving inter-agency collaboration. E, providing incentives for investors, especially in agriculture and power sectors. F, facilitate construction of mass and affordable housing to propel economic growth and reduce the massive housing deficit. G, launch of a consumer credit scheme with the banking sector for citizens to have access to long-term and affordable mortgages and the consumer credit. H, address our security challenges by working in collaboration with the private sector. I, fix power sector by addressing some of the regulatory uncertainties and operational shortcomings of the key players. J, drive efficiency in public service delivery through realignment of the ministries, departments, and agencies, and implementation of e-governance solutions. As you are aware, some of my ministerial nominees are currently 
undergoing the screening as the National Assembly. God willing, the proposals from this session will be discussed and finalized with them in the coming weeks as they take on their portfolios. <laughs> Although most of the proposals were targeted at the federal government, I also wanted to remind the state governors to do their part, especially in the areas of education, health care, which are within their constitutional responsibilities. <laughs> Our collective goal is to implement initiatives that will lift our citizens out of poverty through mass employment and social safety nets. This is achievable with the right fundamentals in place. We must all keep in mind that a successful economy is one where prosperity is felt by the majority. In conclusion, I would like to once again thank members of our party, developmental partners, captains of industries, and private sector representatives, industry experts, and all the other speakers and panel members we took, we look forward to partnering with you on our journey to create a desirable future for our people. I will also want to specifically, specifically thank former Prime Minister of Ethiopia for making, <laughs> for making the time to be here with us and share his experiences. Your presence has been invaluable and without any doubt has helped make the event a great success. <laughs> and I might have all great to safe journey to our respective destinations. Thank you very much. With this speech of President Muhammadu Buhari at the closing ceremony of the two-day policy retreat of President Muhammadu Buhari administration, this is all we have in today's edition of the program. My name is Hassan Umar Farooq, the presenter and producer of the program, saying bye for now.